Hello, this is Professor R. M. Mahindrakar. Today we will be studying about the climatic factors. Now in my last video I had told you that the environmental conditions are divided into four factors. That is the climatic factor, idiopic factor, physiographic factor and biotic factor. So today we will begin with the climatic factor. Climate is one of the most important factor controlling the plant life. The study of climate is called climatology. The climate includes the following main factors. Air and atmosphere, precipitation and water cycle, temperature and light. So today we will discuss about the air and atmosphere. The earth is enveloped by a gaseous layer called atmosphere. Gaseous mantle forming atmosphere extends into the outer space some 1000 kilometers or so above the earth's surface. It maintains contact with all the major types of environment of Earth, interacting with them and greatly affecting their ability to support life. Atmosphere is a reservoir of several elements essential to life. It serves many functions including the filtration of radiant energy coming from the sun, insulation from heat less at the earth's surface and stabilizing of weather and climate owing to the heat capacity of the air. Now let us study the structure of atmosphere. The Earth atmosphere extends, as I've told you, about 560 kilometers, that is 348 miles above the Earth's surface, and it is divided into five layers, each of which has a distinct thermal, chemical, and physical properties. The atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, water vapor, and number of trace gases. Chemical reaction maintains the ratio of the major constituents of the atmosphere to each other. For example, oxygen is released into the atmosphere by photosynthesis and consumed by respiration. So the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere is maintained by a balance between two these through these two important processes that is photosynthesis and respiration. Now we shall say about the layers of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is divided into five layers. The layer that is very close to the Earth's surface is the troposphere. It is uh, warm the, because of the solar radiation. The second sphere is the stratosphere. Now here the temperature goes on decreasing. It reaches almost about nine, minus 60 degrees Celsius. Then the third layer is the mesosphere. Even this is a very cold layer. And then we have the thermosphere. As the name indicates, this is a region of very high temperature. And above this thermosphere is the exosphere, where the temperature is very high. Now we shall see each of this layer in detail. 
So first, let us study about the troposphere. Now, this is the troposphere layer, which is just surrounding the Earth's surface. It is the lowermost layer of the atmosphere in which man and other living organisms live. Troposphere is about 20 kilometers of gases. The proportion of gases in the atmosphere is fairly constant. Troposphere is characterized by steady decrease in temperature and it may decrease up to minus 60 degrees Celsius in the upper layer. The composition of troposphere expecting water vapor and dust particle is presented in the table. The amount of water vapor in the troposphere is maximum in the lowest level of the atmosphere and it decreases gradually in the upper region and is entirely absent about 8 to 10 kilometers. Dust also is limited only to the lower levels. Troposphere is a layer of sulfates and is a region of strong air movement cloud formation, lightning, thundering, etc. Now, the topmost layer of the troposphere, which merges with the next layer, this we call it as the tropopause. Now, this tropopause is a region which we call it as the cold trap. Because here, the condensation of all the water vapor takes place because the temperature is around minus 60 degrees Celsius. So that is why if you observe a sky, you can see that the cloud formation, whatever the topmost layer of the cloud formation, that we call it as a cirrus cloud. The cirrus cloud formation takes place in this uh, tropopause region. And it is in this trop just above this tropopause region here. This is the region where the commercial jet airline and the long distance commercial jet airline fly. Now, this is a photograph taken from a aeroplane where you can see this is the tropopause region where the maximum condensation of the cloud formation has taken place. This is the limit of the troposphere. Now here the temperature is around minus 60 degrees Celsius. Now this is the table which shows the atmospheric gas composition in the troposphere region. Nitrogen is 0.78 mole fraction. Oxygen is 0.21. Water vapor, it varies. Aragon, it is 0.0093. Carbon dioxide, it is 317 to 10 raised to minus 6. Neon is 18.2 into 10 raised to minus 6. Ozone is 0.2 into 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 into 10 raised to minus 6. Helium is 5.2 into 10 raised to the minus 6. Methane is 1.7 to 10 raised to minus 6. Krypton is 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 6. Hydrogen is 0 0.55 into 10 raised to minus 6. Nitrous oxide is 0 0.32 into 10 raised to minus 6. It varies depending upon the pollution. Carbon monoxide also 0 0.03 into 10 raised to minus 6. Then Chlorofluorocarbons is 3.0 into 10 raised to minus 9. Carbonyl sulfide is around 0 0.1 into 10 raised to minus 9. So this is the chart showing you the different composition of the gases present in the troposphere. And troposphere is the only region where it shows the maximum number of gases concentration. Now let's recall about this troposphere. 
Almost all weather occurs in the troposphere. It is the lowest layer of the atmosphere, which extends from the surface up to 8 to 10 kilometers from Earth's surface. The Earth's surface captures the solar radiation and warms the troposphere from below, creating rising air currents that, gen that generate vertical mixing patterns and weather systems as detailed further below. Temperature decreases by about 0.5 degrees Celsius with each kilometer of altitude. And at the top of the troposphere is the tropopause, a layer called as the cold air or the cold trap, which forms the top of the troposphere and creates a cold trap that causes atmospheric water vapor to condense. So now let us see about the second sphere, that is the stratosphere. This is the second layer of the atmosphere. The stratosphere just lies above the tropopause layer. Stratosphere is a region where the temperature goes on decreasing. Now here you can see this is another image of the stratosphere. Now these are the cloud formation regions. So this is the stratopause region where the condensation of the clouds have taken place. Now just above this region, whatever the layer of atmosphere is there, that is the stratosphere. In this stratosphere, we'll see the spike planes are released because here the air density is very less, so all the gliders are released in this layer of the atmosphere. Now, this stratosphere, which uh, runs between 10 kilometers to 50 kilometers from the Earth's surface, it contains this uh, ozone layer. Now, this ozone layer is formed by the solar radiation. That is, the sun's energy splits the oxygen molecules into atomic oxygen and this atomic oxygen then combines with the oxygen and forms ozone layer. Ozone layer plays a very important role because this ozone layer is a layer which acts as a blanket which covers, protects our earth from all the harmful radiations, all the cosmic radiations and ultraviolet radiations that are entering into the troposphere, they are blocked by this ozone layer thus protecting the life of the troposphere. So let us recall about the stratosphere. The uh, stratosphere layer it is the second layer of the atmosphere extending about 30 kilometers above the stratosphere sorry about the troposphere the uppermost layer of the stratosphere is called a stratopause in this region the temperature increases from minus 60 to 5 degrees celsius this increases due to the ozone formation under the influence of solar radiation the ozone layer, that is the ozone sphere, absorbs the ultraviolet radiations and transforms it into heat. The absorption of ultraviolet radiations is, is of great importance in the ecosystem because these radiations are lethal to living organisms. The ozone sphere acts as a blanket and reduces the cooling rate of the earth. The third layer of the atmosphere is called mesosphere. Mesosphere lies between the stratosphere and thermosphere, hence the name meso, in between. Mesosphere is a region 
which lies between 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now, in this mesosphere, the region is characterized by the low atmospheric pressure and low temperature. The temperature begins to drop from stratosphere, goes on decreasing with the increasing in height and reaches a minimum of almost minus 95 degrees Celsius at a level of about 80 to 90 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The upper limit of the mesosphere is termed as the mesopause. This is the mesopause region here. Now, in this mesosphere is a region where the meteorites, when they enter the Earth's surface, they just burn off here. So, whatever the shooting stars will be seeing in the sky. So, that trail of smoke-like thing that you see whenever you see a small uh, meteorite entering into the atmosphere, which we call it as the shooting stars. Now, those are the region. This is the region where the actual burning of the meteorites takes place. So, just re, uh, let us now recall the points of mesosphere. Mesosphere lies between the thermosphere and the stratosphere, hence the name meso that is middle and it is the highest layer of the atmosphere in which the gases are all mixed up rather than being layered up by their masses it is about 40 kilometers in height and characterized by low atmospheric pressure and low temperature the meteorites make it through the exosphere and thermosphere without much trouble because those layers don't have much air. But when they hit the mesosphere, there are enough gases to cause friction and create heat. This causes meteorites to burn into the mesosphere. In mesosphere, the temperature once again falls with increasing altitude to a low of almost minus 93 degrees Celsius at an altitude of 85 kilometers. The upper limit of mesosphere is known as mesopause. The fourth layer of the atmosphere is the thermosphere. As the name indicates, this layer shows rapid increase in temperature. The temperature in this layer range, reaches up to 1700 degrees Celsius. Now this thermosphere is the region where the international space stations are lodged and also the aurora borealis can be witnessed in these regions. An aurora borealis, sometimes referred to as polar lights or northern lights or southern light, is a natural light display in the Earth's sky, predominantly seen in high altitude region. Auroras as a result of disturbances in the magnetosphere caused by solar wind. These disturbances are sometimes strong enough to alter the trajectory of charged particles in both solar wind and magnetospheric plasma. These particles, mainly electrons and protons, participate into the atmosphere. Now, this is a slide showing you uh, International Space Station. This is another image showing you the International Space Station released in the thermosphere of the Earth.
So now let's recall about this thermosphere. Thermosphere is the fourth layer of atmosphere. It extends up to 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. In the thermosphere, temperature increases with height from mesopause and reaches up to 1700 degrees Celsius. In this region, the ultraviolet radiations and cosmic rays cause ionization of molecules like oxygen and nitric oxide, hence it is called as ionosphere. It is in this region the aurora borealis can be seen. High frequency audible sounds are, all, are not carried by ionosphere. The fifth layer of the Earth atmosphere is the exosphere. The region above the ther thermosphere is called exosphere. It contains mostly hydrogen and helium atoms. It has very high temperature due to solar radiations. The Earth's magnetic field plays an important role in the distribution of atomic particles in this region. So exosphere, it is a region above the thermosphere. It contains mostly hydrogen and helium atoms. It has very high temperature due to solar radiations. The Earth's magnetic field plays an important role in distribution of uh, atomic particles in this region. Now we shall see about the atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere exerts pressure at the surface equal to the weight of the overlying air. The atmospheric pressure declines exponentially with the altitude. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is maximum. And the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1013 millibars. The pressure falls with increasing altitude because the weight of the overlying air decreases. It falls exponentially because air is compressible so most of the mass of the atmosphere is compressed into this lowest layer about half of the mass of the atmosphere lies in the lowest 5.5 kilometers now we shall see air as an ecological factor the gaseous mixture present in the troposphere is called air. Air moving from high pressure to low atmospheric pressure is called wind. It is an important ecological factor of the environment and if it affects the plant life mainly on flat plains, high altitude in mountains and along the sea coast. Now we shall see some of the effects of the air on vegetation. Wind increases the rate of transpiration in plants because the wind carries out the water vapor around the leaf area, so thereby creating a diffusion pressure deficit. So that's how the rate of diffusion increases and the transpiration also increases in plants. Air or wind, mechanically, it causes erosion of topsoil and reduction of bud growth due to abrasion. Physiologically, it reduces the growth of plant by reducing the moisture content and turgidity of plant pot plants.
very strong hot and dry wind kill young plants within few hours in open situations like seashore and mountain tops the growth of birds is checked on the windward side strong wind uproot trees and cause breaking of weak stem plants like maize paddy sugarcane etc now this you might have observed during the rainy season wind helps in pollination and dispersal of seeds now this is a image showing the destruction caused to the vegetation by high velocity of wind now here you can see the wind is carrying out the top soil now this is very common in open areas where the velocity of wind is unchecked so whatever the top layer of the soil will be carried by the wind now this is an image showing you the dispersal of seed now this is the papus callus which helps in dispersal of uh, the seeds and these are the plants which are growing at high altitude because as you go higher the wind velocity increases so here you can see this is the windward side now here there is very limited growth of plants because these birds are always are abraised by the wind velocity so that is why most of the branches you see they'll be growing on the other side of the wind here so these are the different effects caused by the air so here today we have studied about the different layers of the atmosphere we have seen what is atmospheric pressure we have also seen what all, what is meant by air and also the different effects of wind on vegetation so in the next class we shall see the next climatic factor that is the light till then be safe take care of your health thank you